You did tweet that numbers being banded around today are wildly inaccurate. Can you just comment any more on that? Yeah, no, as uh, we've stated, the terms of the negotiation, like any of these negotiations, are confidential. What I can say, though, is that in these types of disputes, what you do try and find is a situation that gives um, certainly Rugby Australia some certainty. Uh, this settlement gives us that, uh, and it also uh, ensured that we were in a situation where the cost to Rugby Australia was less than seeing a trial through to the end of February. Rayleigh, just two days ago, you said that you were doing the right thing by pursuing this court action, and then you left to settle. Why did you back down? We didn't back down. I think what, what I've just said is right. We needed to give the game cost certainty. The um, feedback we were getting from our rugby community was that uh, they wanted this matter settled. They want to go into the new year, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, knowing that they can go in with a clean slate and start talking about rugby again instead of talking about this case. But all your Yeah, as, as I've said, and, and I, I can keep saying it, um, these are ultimately commercial decisions. Um, we had to make a decision that was right for rugby in this country. We made the right decision in, in calling out um, Israel um, on his, on his uh, posts and on his inappropriate uh, messaging. Uh, that remains the same. We stick to our values that inclusiveness is absolutely core to the key of rugby. Um, ultimately, taking this conversation further into a court situation was not helping the game. Uh, and so we made a decision that gave us cost certainty, that put us in the best financial situation um, and entering the new year in a positive way. Have you, have you spoken to the board or any members of Rugby Australia uh, about your future here? No, no, no. Were you stepping down from your position? <laughs> no, this is a commercial decision that we've made. Uh, everyone's comfortable with that and decision. just on the settlement, don't you think that the public interest outweighs confidentiality in this case? I mean, it's been dragged on for eight months. There's plenty of rugby fans out there. You've said before yourself you want to do the right thing by rugby fans. Everybody wants to know what the settlement was. Yeah, and I think they do. You're right. They absolutely do. But the reality is if, if you've ever done one of these and you've ever been involved in them, the terms of it are confidential. It's disappointing that there's been numbers speculated about, put out in the media, um, and that has is, that is created this situation. The whole point of a confidential um, settlement document is that you don't talk about the numbers and you don't speculate on them and you draw a line in the sand and you moved on and unfortunately because of what's happened this morning we're here, we're here having this conference. Would you hindsight so it would be... as vindication? Would you agree with that? <coughs> Uh, I think if you look at the statement that was uh, drafted yesterday and, and a lot of work went into that statement by both parties, there was an apology both ways. Um, that apology was both ways because this has been very stressful. It's been a very hard time for the Flowers and it's been a very hard time for Rugby Australia. Um, but at the end of the day, it was about that difficult time that Rugby Australia apologised for, um, but we stand by our decision in the process we've been through. Will insurance cover um, whatever financial out, um, costs you have to pay? Uh, we do have an insurance policy in place, yes. Will it, cost, will it cover most of that, some of it, I, of it? I can't discuss that, Georgina. Raylene, did you simply just get this wrong? No, we didn't get it wrong. At the end of the day, we stood up for the values of Rugby Australia. The person that chose to breach the code of conduct was found guilty. Um, his, term, his contract was ultimately terminated because of that. That stands up and continues to say, this is an inclusive sport. Behaviour and commentary of this type is not acceptable in our sport. Um, and everybody in rugby needs to be included regardless of what their background is. At the end of the day, we've, we've parted ways. So. Why did you maintain the rhetoric that you've maintained all along about the moral side of the story rather than the commercial side of the story? Uh, I, I don't know whether you've ever been through one of these before. I don't know if you've ever actually been through a process that's an employee-employee termination. Um, it, that is the reality of the situation that we're dealing with. We've got an employer and an employee. We've got to a stage where we could have ended up in court or we've come to a settlement. It's a very normal process that happens in the business world every day. The situation is no different. Where does the payout put Rugby Australia in terms of a financial position? It's, been, it's well documented that money has struggling a little bit, where does it put Rugby Australia now? Yeah, like I've said before, this gives us cost certainty, we're very comfortable with it and ultimately um, it was uh, allowed us to um, uh, be, I don't know exactly what the right words, the, allow us to not um, um, have the uncertainty of a trial going into February. Could things have been, could things have been handled any differently earlier in proceedings? 
Oh, I think we've tried. We've tried all along to try and you know handle this in a way that gets the game. Um, and, and you know, I'm personally really sad. I'm personally really sad that we've found ourselves in this situation. Um, my belief was that we had an agreement where we could both exist. Um, Israel could continue to play football, um, he could continue to be a proud man of faith, and Rugby Australia could live by its values. And that was absolutely where we started this new contract. That's the agreement that I believe we had, but ultimately it wasn't the case. You said before that so, there were things you'd reflect on, that of course you, know, you might do a few things differently. Do you think re-signing in four years is one of those things? Might you have considered a, a Shorter deal? I think um, you know those things are really easy with hindsight. You know, I've been asked the question: Should you not have resigned him? Can you imagine the furor if we hadn't resigned him? You know, so I mean, I think there's there's lots of things that are really easy in hindsight throughout this. Um, it has been really difficult for everybody involved. It has not been easy. But I keep reiterating: the main reason we're here today is Rugby Australia stood up for its values, um, and its values are about inclusiveness, and that remains this case exactly the same today. Will you look to put social media? clauses in standard player contracts in the future? Well, um, the, the code of conduct as it stands stood up. So the social media clauses in the inclusion policy in the current CBA negotiated uh, code of conduct stood up. Ultimately, it, he was, it was found that his tweet did not um, deliver to the values of our game, um, and that's ultimately why his contract was terminated. So you won't look to you know, tweak the standard player contract to make that any more clear, or is that we, all We go into a CBA negotiation um, at the end, at middle, beginning, middle of next year, uh, and at that stage, um, you know, that is certainly something that will be on the table for discussion, because I think all players want is clarity, right? They just want to understand clearly what the guidelines are, what they're working to, and if we can do something to make those guidelines clear, we will certainly be working towards that. And why, after all of this, do you still think you are the right person to lead Rugby Australia? Yeah, I do, because I think, at the end of the day, this has been very difficult. There's not a you know business leader that leads an organisation that I haven't spoken to um, that has looked at this situation and gone, this is a very difficult thing. They've gone out and reviewed their policies. They've debated it around their board tables. They've debated it in their leadership groups. How would we cope if we had something like this happen to us? So, you know, we have been, uh, as I've said from the beginning, people have looked at us to see how we've dealt with this, um, and ultimately we've had ex you know extensive support from from the rugby community and also from the wider, wider business community. Were there times where you were worried yourself that, that you may not be here by the end of the day? <laughs> no. These jobs are not easy. And they're not easy because every single thing that you do gets debated and discussed by the media, part of the job, by the fans, part of the job. That's what comes with it. And everyone's got an opinion on it. This particular issue is probably the most challenging issue, well, one of the most challenging issues a CEO could deal with in, in corporate Australia. Um, and so it, it has been difficult. Have but you ultimately... To have you spoken to Israel today or yesterday? Or no, I haven't. So, so Raylan, on that, as you know, people have been critical of you. And sure. They'd call for you to resign. What would you say to your critics? I would say that we, at every stage, looked to try and defend the position of Rugby Australia and ensure that the very, very key value of inclusiveness stood up. Um, that's what we did, that's what we continue to do, um, and we continue to make Rugby Australia and rugby a sport that everyone can be welcome in in this country. How important was it to get it resolved now, this year, because how much damage do you feel it has done to the code over the past six months? Well, there's been lots of really positive things happening in rugby, but unfortunately trying to shout through to get those positive messages forward when we've been dealing with this case has been really difficult. So, uh, you know, uh, we are pleased that we're going to start the year in a positive um, vein. Uh, we start with the Sydney Sevens, which is hugely important for us, um, and then we, we lead into Super Rugby. We've announced Dave Rennie as a new Wallaby head coach. That's incredibly exciting for Wallaby fans to be able to see a new coach take the, take the lead. Those are the stories that we want to be talking about. Would Did you the stop board agree to the... from uh, playing in Super Rugby again? Um, at the end of the day, <laughs> we've just parted ways. Um, that's that's yeah, that's not a discussion that so that's, he's that's had. Well, yes, he's been he's been terminated since April. But you Did guys stated in your defence um, to the restraint of trade that he was free to sign another contract, just be, even though he'd you know, been terminated with one. Um, so technically, the door I guess remains open. Is that not correct? Uh, at the end of the day, his contract has been terminated. Um, I think it's clear to see that we have a... Um our values are not aligned, um, and the expectations that Rugby Australia would have um, of any of Israel coming back um, into the sport would not be acceptable. So it's a clear that. 
Uh, well, it, it, never say never, right? Because, I mean, that would be crazy for me to say that. What I'm saying is I think we've got a value uh, disalignment, if that's the right word, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, I don't believe that he would sign under the current player contract, which means he had to be respectful in the social so media use. To say you can't, can't do this on social media, if that's what you're saying now, you would have to put that out to everybody. As like I said, he's the, the player contract is what it is, the code of conduct is very clear and inclusion is very important to us. Understanding your insurance policies and how you make claim on that, will this position mean that you're going to have to re-look at the budget and how you're spending your money? No, uh, that's the good thing about the settlement is that it's put us in a place where we do have certainty um, and there won't be any money taken out of community rugby or any. Um, we won't have to make any changes to the budget situation. It's not affected by the line. No. <laughs> um, I can't talk about the settlement uh, numbers as I've said before, um, but all I can say is we're in a better position by settling than we would have been going through court. Can you Thanks, say thank you. Board thank you. Discussed discussed guys, one more. This is the last one. Did the board discuss the settlement, the terms of the settlement? Yeah, of course. That's that's the process. Is that we we knew um, going into a court ordered settlement process because I think it's the other important thing. This is court ordered. The court wants you to try and settle this as an employment dispute. Um, we went to that mediation. As you know, it was 12 hours of mediation. Didn't get completed till two days later. Um, and ultimately, uh, we had a number that we knew was more cost effective for us to um, to settle than it was to go to court. Thank thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you. Ray.